Hey everybody, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And this is a, a season, or not season, a year ending episode number 30. 30. The final episode of 2018. Dirty 30 to finish off the year. <laughs> Dirty 30, yeah. I guess we can go that way too. <laughs> uh, so uh, this this week we're going to be talking about obviously the week in review. We'll also be talking about what the uh, Tyler Sagan and Jamie Benn debacle that's going on. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, we'll do a little game. New Year's. Uh, I don't want to give it away, but we'll play a game at the end of the, yeah. end of the show, and we'll talk about uh, this week's upcoming games, which are huge. Yes. All three of them. Absolutely. So, you ready to start the show? Ready. Cool. Well, no silly quips today. Just a reminder that after the 7-4 win that the Sharks put down on the Oilers, the headline that ESPN decided to run was, McDavid dominates Sharks with two goals. Yeah, still, still kind of reeling from that one. That was, uh, I, yeah, like, bitter, bitter much. You know, honestly, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. I am bitter. Okay, uh, obviously, you know, we're, we're sharks fans here, but I, I mean, I don't know. To me, it's just clickbait. It's it's a clickbait move by ESPN, which is a gigantic sports organization. And Aaron will go into the history a little bit more on the, the hockey side of it, but it's embarrassing, in my opinion. It's embarrassing that you use the name McDavid as your clickbait, and you say he dominates the Sharks when Melker Carlson got two goals, Logan Couture got two goals, and you choose McDavid dominates. Eric like Carlson had four points. And Eric Carlson <laughs> had four points. Uh, uh, to me, it's embarrassing that you're using ESPN for hockey news to begin with. That's fair. Because they are awful. That is fair. Uh, and if you go back in a little history lesson mm-hmm. of ESPN and why they're terrible, uh, go back <laughs> to the lockout of the 0-4-0-5 o- uh, season, um, the NHL was looking for a new TV deal, mm-hmm. and at the ESPN, I think, had the rights beforehand. That's when they had Barry Melrose and uh, uh, I'm blanking on his name now. Uh, <laughs> uh, whatever, the other guy that was <laughs> that was doing the, the someone play who's not memorable enough to remember his names. So. Right now, I feel terrible. Sure. Um, <laughs> anyway, they they lowballed the NHL, giving them a ridiculous low in the low millions yeah. for a TV deal. And so that kind of forced Gary Bettman to look elsewhere, and he found what was then Outdoor Life Network trying to broaden their sports packages that they had. At that point, it was essentially fishing shows, hunting shows, mm-hmm. and they did the Tour de France. It was the only place you could find the Tour de France in July. So um, they wanted to broaden it, so they pitched a deal to the NHL, to Gary Bettman, and he yeah. said, let's do it. And everyone said, who? Because <laughs> outdoor, outdoor Life Network changed their name to Versus when they struck the deal. So then it became Versus, and it was a big joke. Like, what channel is Versus on? And I remember having cable back then, and it was like channel 200-something. <laughs> Trying to figure most, it out. <laughs> yeah. Most channels back then went to like 1 through 100, and it was like 2-something. <laughs> so it was a pain to find it. People always... It was a big, you know, butt of the joke right. for the NHL um, trying to find that channel. So and then eventually versus was bought by Comcast slash NBC and they changed they rebranded to NBC Sports, right. which I think is a much better well known name sure. compared to Versus or Outdoor Life Network. Um, so ever since the O four five lockout, um, NHL hockey has been on that channel, and I don't know if it's ever going to move back to ESPN. So going back to ESPN, right. after they didn't get the deal, um, they completely. Uh, axed almost everything they had on hockey. Uh, there used to be NHL Tonight on ESPN2. Right. Uh, John Butchergrass, that's the guy's name. Oh, okay. I'm sure people were yelling at me. John Butchergrass. It wouldn't have been me. That's that's a yeah. big name that I would not have remembered. Yeah, uh, He's <laughs> one of the anchors on ESPN that, oh, was, okay. that was very focused on hockey. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's written a few books and stuff. But um, anyway, I, I, ESPN is a joke to me. I, I never look at them for hockey. I, I get really angry when <laughs> it's... It's hockey season and NBA season, right? Yeah. And there's nothing else. There's no football, at the, you know, in a, in a month or two. There's sure, not going to be any yeah. football. There's not going to be any baseball. And yet, baseball and football still dominate ESPN when there's hockey and there's playoffs and there's there's exciting stuff going right. on. So it really makes me angry. Yeah. So I gave up on ESPN a long time ago because I feel like they disrespected the sport. And to be fair, it's not like I'm looking to ESPN for any of the news in terms of NHL, but um, just seeing that popped up. I just I gravitated towards it, and mm-hmm. uh, wow. So uh, ESPN, even though you're not watching, 
<laughs> Shame on you. Shame on you. Yes. Um, so anyway, week in review, uh, we had a game at uh, well against the, the Ducks at home, mm-hmm. and uh, that was a, a pretty good showing all, all around, I would say. So uh, Yeah, and uh, shout out to you yeah. for... Uh, oh, boy. For dooming John Gibson, poor guy. Uh, and we'll look at last week's so, episode's clip. Yeah, let's go ahead and just we'll roll that clip right now. So let's start with the Ducks game. Okay, sure. What are you expecting out of that game? I'm, I'm expecting, I don't want to wish, I don't even want to say it because <laughs> I feel like I, it's going to happen. I'm going to feel really bad. Um, Gibson hasn't been injured yet. Gibson hasn't been injured yet. Gibson has been injured yet. <laughs> is, he, uh, is he due? Without saying is it. Is he yeah. due? I don't know. Um, no. Yeah, so, <laughs> um, again, I had said I, I don't want to say it because I, I feel bad because it'll probably happen. Um, and it did. And it did. <laughs> and we don't even know what happened. Not only did it happen, <laughs> it happened on the game we were talking about, right. which is amazing. People are telling me to go buy a lottery ticket. Yeah. In the um, middle of the game. It happened in the, and, and there wasn't like, I don't think we saw anything happen. Like There wasn't anything specific. He's just They showed a, a clip of him stretching over the crossbar. Right. So maybe it's a back injury or something, or maybe his back tightened up. Yeah, they they did call it an upper body injury is the reason that he left. I don't know if it was a back or a neck or something to that effect. Mm-hmm. But um, so it's not all on me, and it may not <laughs> even be true because it, you had said that he played the he next played game. the next game yeah. in I think it was in Arizona or I know it was against the Coyotes, and um, I, I he's definitely not healthy. And Gibson, we we talked about this about the Anaheim team, and mm-hmm. you know Mike Johnson aside that. Uh, they live and die by Gibson. When Gibson gets hurt, and he gets hurt every single year, this is the whole point of right. last week's clip, um, their team just is going to tank. And the Arizona game, he gave up five goals. So they were up 4-2 to two going halfway into the third period, and they tied it up, forced overtime, and then scored 30 seconds in overtime. And if you look at Anaheim's before he got hurt, before the Sharks games, they've only given up no more than three goals in a game. It's either one goal, two yeah. goals, three goals. And uh, he gave up five goals in that game. So I don't think he's healthy. I don't think he's probably playing through it because they need him to. Right. Um, they just don't have competent goalie issue. Or they don't have a, back, a, a competent backup goalie. Right. And if you look at the Sharks, we have Aaron Dell. If Martin Jones gets hurt, you know, right. knock on wood. Again, that's Ikea. I don't think it's real. <laughs> um, but... So if if he's okay, then okay, not my fault. But uh, it sounds like he might actually uh, have an injury, even though he tried playing through it. It seems like he might actually have something going on there. I and, wouldn't be surprised uh, if we see some time, see him on the IR in the near future, yeah, maybe yeah. for a week and get better. Yeah, I don't know what the injury is, but it doesn't sound like he's healthy. Well, I I don't wish any harm on anyone, obviously. <laughs> for I mean, not not for real, obviously. So um, John Gibson, I hope you do feel better, and uh, I mean, I hope you come back and play like garbage because I don't want Mike Johnson <laughs> to be right. Uh, but uh, a milestone during that game, Burnsy playing his one thousandth game. Yeah, and yeah. not only that, he scored a beaut of a goal and ended up being the game winner. Yeah, uh, he crushed that puck from the point, and it went right into the far post. Almost like seeing eye because it went through a couple people and mm-hmm. just uh, almost almost hit the post and in like yeah, pretty yeah. close to it, um, and that was a I'd say a, a pretty typical Burnsy goal. Um, so it's great to see him. Sure. I, I mean a thousand games. I thought that was pretty crazy. Um, I don't feel like he's that old, yeah. but I guess he's not that young either. No. So he's... and he doesn't miss a lot of time. Uh, I That's think he's, say, yeah. he's the current Iron Man streak on the Sharks. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So he's he um, he's. I don't know, good old reliable right there. <laughs> Not only that, he, he scores, he leads the team in points, yeah. so he, he does everything well. Yeah, and and there was an article that was recently put out about how he takes care of his body and uh, the, the foods that he's eating. Now, obviously, he has a ranch that he gets to, you know, harvest animals from, which is, you know, <laughs> not everybody gets to do that. Uh, but so he's, they're talking about the axis deer and how it's a different flavor than like the white tail deer and it's much it's more everything leaner. else. It's leaner, yeah. right? So it has more health benefits to it. And he's actually been sharing this information with the team. They've changed the way that they eat now, mm-hmm. um, not just on an individual level, but for the entire team, like the catering and whatnot, it's, it's changed. They've taken pasta off the menu altogether mm-hmm. they have a, a team um i don't know if it's a chef or yeah a, a catering uh, service or yeah. something to that effect yeah. but they have someone who's in charge of, of the right. menu items and stuff and they did take off the pasta yeah off the menu which is funny because i mean when Carbs. i was in high school it was we carb load yeah. the night before a game where you eat a ton of pasta because that's what you do yeah i don't know that's what you did pasta and bread <laughs> <laughs> now now flash forward i don't know 
however old we are 20 years later and nutrition's you, changed right completely yeah. so now you need to raise axis deer to be at the top of your game <laughs> right. i guess yeah. i don't know yeah. But anyway, uh, so yeah, Burnsy uh, getting he uses his four, uh, fifth goal of, of the season, I believe is what it was, and uh, come out on top with that one with the game winner. What else are you going to ask for? Um, yeah. One thing that I did want to bring up was, uh, it wasn't a tweet, actually. It was on Facebook, I believe it was, mm-hmm. and it was talking about the line combination, something that I put out there. And, um, I, I, you know, we'll just go ahead and put the picture up uh, on the screen right now. But the, the line combinations were something like this. It was uh, Sorensen centered by Thornton and then uh, Pavelski on the wing. Now, that line, normally you've got Sorensen and Thornton on the third line, or what we're calling the third line. And, you know, just because Pavelski's on it now, all of a sudden it's the first line, right? So this is why I go back and I was saying, you know, it doesn't really make sense to me that we're calling them first line, second line, third line because... A lot of these guys, you can shift them around and, and they'll play anywhere and everywhere. I mean, look at Tomas Hurdle. Tomas Hurdle was centering the third line with Evander Kane mm-hmm. on his wing, right? Does that mean that they're third line <laughs> players now? Or I, I know you don't play fantasy, but what's funny is is uh, in I play on Yahoo. Okay, they add position eligibility for certain players, and Thomas Tomas Hurdle yeah. has center, left wing, and right oh, wing. Yeah. He's completely every position. <laughs> so there's some players like that, especially Sharks players. Sure. Um, Pavelski usually gets center and right wing. Um, and and another, the perfect example is Hurdle having all three. Because yeah. he gets shifted around and plays yeah. in different spots. So then you've got, on the second line, you had uh, Radil playing on the wing. Now, is Radil a, a second line player? Uh, maybe, maybe not, but he could certainly fill in. Mm-hmm. Played pretty well. And they put Donskoy down on the, the low utilization line, right? Well, in that sense, it actually worked out. He he got a really nice assist on a goal. Yeah. In and it was their their fourth line, you know, putting it up. I I don't see this as a demotion of of players. I see this as a shuffling. And we talked about this in the live too, mm-hmm. where Pete DeBoer is able to shuffle his guys around and it creates mismatches for other teams because now you've got a fourth line that has to deal with a, a talent like Jonas Donskoy. Mm-hmm. I don't see it really as him being demoted. I see it as. Man, really loading up on all four lines and being able to have an attack on all four lines, mm-hmm. right? So I don't know. I, I again, I go back to this idea of you know, oh, this is our first line. Well, he shouldn't be on the first line. He should be on this line. Well, the way that Pete DeBoer's got the blender going, right, with all these different guys, it's really just a matter of who's playing more in terms of first line or who's got the most minutes. It's not so much that one guy's got more skill than the other guy, and that's why he's playing there. You've got these this great opportunity to create these crazy mismatches. I mean, not many teams have a guy like Jonas Donskoy playing on their fourth line, right? Mm-hmm, and right. that's where you start seeing some of these goals. We saw in this game and in the Oilers game, mm-hmm. the fourth line coming through big time. And so that was just one of the things I wanted to put out there was not to put so much weight in the line combinations that they put out there. They label them first, second, third, fourth. But they're all so good, and they're all so capable of, of uh, amounting to such a great attack. And it's really hard for the teams to just match up against that. Right. And we, we talked about this in the live segment. And just a quick plug um, for the live segment. It was we usually record that on Sunday nights, yeah. uh, 9.30 t- p.m. Pacific time, um, where me and Paul will field questions from everybody. And um, we usually do 30 to 45 minutes of it. And then we record this show. So uh, if you haven't checked it out, check it out. And it's it's great interaction with us. Um, but what I talked about on the live segment was... Um, Pete DeBoer put the put the blender basically put the lines right. in the blender, and what it's doing is is other teams don't know how to react to it because if you have all the four lines together all the time, you can kind of scout and you know exactly what they're going to do and you mm-hmm. know their tendencies. When you start blending them up, now who are you going to match up with who? Because now you kind of have to blend up your lines to match up right. the who you want to defend against, um, either with the defensive pairings or most likely the forward right. lines. So um, it kind of forces other teams to react to what you're doing as mm-hmm. opposed to playing their own game and, and figuring it out. Yeah. So, um, I, And it's working. It's obviously working with the Sharks' record in the last 10 games. Um, and he, he did break up that Couture, Meyer, and right. uh, hurdle. hurdle line. Um, but we're seeing all of them flourish now. Right. They, they kind of sputtered a little bit, and then he kind of blended it up, and now... Everybody's doing well, and so. and leading into the Oilers game, which is the next game that that happened uh, in this past week. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you look at, at a line like McDavid. And sometimes they'll put McDavid and Drysaddle together, right? Because they're looking for offense. For the Sharks, it's really easy. We put Vlasic and Braun against that line, right? Yep. We put our best defensive pairing up against their best forwards, their best scoring forwards. With the Sharks, if you've got that blender going, who do you put your best defensive pair up against when you've got? 
both <laughs> Evander Kane and Hurdle on the ice at the same time, but you've also got Pavelski and what Thornton and yeah, Sorensen on the ice right. at the same time. You've also got Logan and Meyer on the ice at the same time. How do you defend against that, right? You can't play your best defenseman against the, those lines every single time. Right. So and they obviously couldn't. And it forces you into these mismatches on um, these mm-hmm. forwards playing against pairings of defense that probably shouldn't be up against them, right? Yep. Anyway, uh, go oh, ahead. Go and the Oilers going to the Oilers game. Now. Yes. Um, I was gonna say McDavid. Going back to that headline of McDavid dominating the Sharks. That's <laughs> obviously someone just looking at the score sheet and going, "Okay, here's the biggest name, McDavid, two right. goals. Oh, he must have dominated the game." The first goal was kind of iffy. I don't know if you saw it. Um, they thought they had scored first. They Ty kinda, Ratty. Right, and, yeah. they, and the ref called a goal, and so everyone kind of let up a little bit, and then yeah. McDavid put it in. Well, uh, Kurz had tweeted this out saying, like, there was an email from the league that went out saying that Ratty's goal wasn't a goal, it didn't go all the way to the line, but McDavid put it in afterwards, right. which is kind of, eh, it's a little shady. So hit, that goal was kind of iffy. Then his next goal was five seconds left in the game. A beautiful goal. <laughs> yeah. He tipped it in over Jones, wide open. I mean, it was just, it was a very a highly skilled goal yeah. that not a lot of people could do. So it was a great goal, but it was with five seconds left. So it, the game was already decided at that point. Right. Uh, so if you think about it, McDavid was pretty much neutralized for the majority of the game. Yeah. Um, I'm sure he had his chances, but he didn't score other than those... I mean, it's funny, he didn't score than those two goals. Yeah. But those two goals, one was kind of shady and the other one was five seconds less. Who cares? And and what you just said, between the first goal, which was minutes into the game, right, and then the last goal that he scored, or the second goal, which mm-hmm. was five seconds left, what did he do in between? He got neutralized, right? Mm-hmm. So, And the fourth line was up against him, I believe, uh, at least one time, because I know that Mismatches. they scored. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the fourth, Our fourth line, load utilization. But they scored against that McDavid line being out on the ice. So... Um, I don't know. I, I think a lot of weight gets put on on these guys for, you know, being the the best in the league and whatnot. But it just goes to show hard work. Um, hard work beats all. Yeah. So um, good to see the fourth line, our our guys going out there and, you know, really taking it by the reins and saying we're not gonna we're not gonna get pushed around by these guys. Yeah, they're getting depth scoring, yeah. which is what good elite teams need to absolutely do well, and that's gonna translate well into the playoffs. So. Not that we're there yet. We're still only halfway in the season. <laughs> right. But um, I think the Sharks are, are looking good and um, looking very dangerous and definitely a top top three team in the West. Right. Um, and I'd say top five, top six in the NHL. Yeah. So, and, and it was funny because we, we said in the live too, the uh, EK65, he came back from his two-game suspension mm-hmm. and he put up enough points to basically make up for the time that he missed. Yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, four, four points plus five, one goal, three assists. Um, I- and he came back with a fury and someone had said I think it was on Twitter someone had said gosh if this is the way he bounces back let's get him suspended on the last game of the season <laughs> you know yeah. get him going for playoffs right. um, but you know a couple other guys that had some really good games too and we want to call him out Logan another two goal game this is not the first time this season he's had two goal games mm-hmm. he stepped up big and again that fourth line guy Melker Carlson putting up two goals himself Yep. so Really, just a good job up and down the lineup. Um, it, there wasn't any one team, one line that was dominating. Although Connor McDavid dominated us, um, <laughs> whatever. I'm still salty. This I don't is going to be like another Mike Johnson. Yeah, it is. It is all season. ESPN and Mike Johnson. I'm taking on everybody. I don't care. <laughs> so no, but it's you know it's great to see up and down the lineup. Everybody contributing. Everybody everybody putting up points. Um, I also want to shout out yeah. to I think Martin Jones has been playing yes. pretty well. I think I he let in. Four goals. One of those was kind of be it. The two McDavid goals, sure. I think, were kind of eh. even. They scored another goal. They scored their third goal with was a little over three minutes left, three minutes and six seconds or something. Dry settle. Yeah, and that and again, the game was already seven to two at yeah. that point, so it was definitely decided. Um, I I think Jones is playing pretty well. I think he's back. I think uh, I mean you can look at his stats and his numbers. He's looking pretty good, right. better than where he was when he started the season. Um, we're getting a lot of chatter uh, in our live show about the Sharks needing to trade Jones or <laughs> or or having Dell start still, which I think is just a little silly. They want to trade for Sergey Bobrovsky, Bobrovsky. <laughs> which is silly. I think oh, we talked about this before yeah. episodes ago. <laughs> Bobrovsky does not have a good track record in the playoffs. If you look at his playoff numbers, they are atrocious, whereas Martin Jones is complete opposite of that. So... I'd rather have a playoff goalie than a stud in the regular season. Yeah. 
No, I, I'm not going to disagree with you. And, on that and one, it's hard to compare Columbus, but he was also on Philadelphia before he was on Columbus. Okay, to be fair, Philadelphia and and Kevin Kurz, if you're watching this, uh, <laughs> you know, um, don't even try. But Philadelphia is where goaltenders go to die. Right. That's that's, true. that's, that's what it is. They're I'm cursed. It, it really, it's the truth. I mean, there, there hasn't been a really good goaltending, like even tandem, but it hasn't well, been a really good starting goaltender in right. a long time. Hart is their is their new shiny new one. The guy shiny who's about object. To die. Yeah. <laughs> He's either going to get traded or uh, or will die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I hope he doesn't get injured. I will say that right now. I hope he does not get injured. Okay. Right. Don't want to put any bad juju on anybody else. But uh, speaking of other teams, there's uh, some some fun stuff going on with uh, one team, the Dallas Stars. Yes. Yeah. You want to jump into that? Uh, <laughs> sure. That hot uh, mess. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen the news, but this past week, right. uh, the CEO of the Dallas Stars uh, was talking some major trash. Uh, and I can't even repeat actually what he said. It was so bad. <laughs> so um, he basically threw under the bus Tyler Sagan and Jamie Benn, uh, their top two highest paid players, yeah. um, for pay- playing poorly. Um, and That's putting it nicely. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, not putting in the effort that they should be considering right. that they're making so much money and that they're all-star players. So uh, what do you what do you think about this whole situation I mean, I, I know exactly what what you're going to say, right? And we, we wrote it on the board, but it's, yeah, it's entirely unprofessional. It's entirely unprofessional for a, the CEO of a team yeah. um, to, first of all, be chatting back and forth with the GM using this language, but not just between them, to put it out there publicly saying, I mean, it's explicative, horse, explicative is the words that he chose, right? I mean, that's, again, we can't even say it on the show because of the way that we want to run the show, but... Right. It's just insane that you would, first of all, that you would say anything remotely close to that about your own players. And second, that you would use the type of language that you used in a public forum like that and Mm -hmm. and putting it out there, specifically wanting to put it out there about these players. Um, To me, that's just, it's entirely unprofessional. It's uncalled for and it's it's unheard of, in my opinion. It's just ridiculous. So a lot of people are thinking that one or both of those guys are going to get traded. Right. Now, Tyler Sagan, to me, a lot of people want Tyler Sagan. And we actually talked about this yeah. before he had signed his extension uh, earlier in the show that the Sharks maybe should trade for Tyler Sagan. Right. I think this was still in the offseason, actually, going yeah. way back. Um, I, I think I was for it, and now I don't think so, especially with this new news coming out mm-hmm. about him getting that extension and just not really putting in the effort that he should. He now has a track history because he started with the Boston Bruins and granted he was a young kid. Right. Uh, he was a bit of a party boy. I don't know if he still is now, but sure. um, he had some major problems and there's also some rumors of some other stuff, which they're rumors. Yeah. I'm not going to say what they are. You right. can Google it. But um, it, it seems like trouble seems to find him now. Okay. And similar situation with I guess, I mean, not similar exactly with Evander Kane, yeah. <laughs> but we have Evander Kane and we have Carlson, Carlson, Eric Carlson, right, who there's some stuff that people were saying, you don't want Carlson. I mean, we get to some be of these. fair, yeah, to be fair, this is from Ottawa fans trying to let Sharks fans have a little bit of an inside track on Eric Carlson. Some of them are in our comments of our videos, you can yeah, see. Yeah, yeah, and so, I mean, there might be some disgruntled fan behavior in there. There might be some, you know, just genuinely trying to, you know, give a warning to people who are fans and have no say on whether or not he resigns anyway. But um, that would basically make San Jose kind of a destination for like these problem child folks. But um, you know, if if Sagan were to sign here, now I'm kind of with you. I was I was a big fan of Tyler Sagan and potentially having Sagan come aboard as well. That'd be I think he's a great player. If you take all of the extracurricular stuff out of the picture, and I was going to relate him essentially to you know an Evander Kane. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is the same type of same type of thing that we hear or heard about Evander Kane in the past and it doesn't seem to have uh, manifested itself here in San Jose. He seems to be playing okay. We haven't heard any like crazy news. There has been one report obviously but that's just allegations and the person's been called forth to come forward and no one's done anything yet. So um, regardless I just don't think that it's apples and apples necessarily but I'm kind of with you. I think that um, Tyler might not be the best fit for the locker room um, although I think he would be a great addition uh, from just a player perspective to the team. And we talked about trying to replace Joe Thornton. Right. And, you know, with John Tavares, and that didn't work out and everything. So I could definitely see a high school player uh, coming in in the next year or so to right. try to replace. I'd, I'd still rather see them go after someone more like Duchesne. Sure. Yeah. Um, I think he would be 
you, I mean, this is completely off topic, but <laughs> I think that would be a, a better target to me yeah. than Sagan because Sagan's going to be making way more money. That's true. And it's kicking in next year as extension, and if they were to trade him now, um, yeah, I, I just don't think the Sharks should take that contract on. Yeah. Um, especially if you're going to get a guy who kind of has a history and now he might not show that effort right. for all those eight years that he signed for with all that money. Um, it could be a situation where, you know, honeymoon season is over and then he's just not producing and not yeah. doing it well and now he's going to be the the whipping boy yeah. of the season um, and that's kind of what he's the whipping mm -hmm. boy of the CEO which is crazy that, it is that's that's nuts to me um, you know though I, I kind of what you had said you know maybe he's not putting in the effort but I also want to put some of the blame on the GM here and part of the blame goes to them because you're signing guys for eight years for lots and lots of money. It's something we talked about before the show started. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's kind of on you. It's kind of on you to be able to see past this and say, do we need to sign, should we sign this guy for really long term? Or are you just getting, saying, you know, he's such a good player, we have no choice, otherwise we have to give him up. Well, now I wonder if that GM's kicking himself, right? Yeah. Do you think maybe he should have said to himself, well, you know, maybe I'll just offer him the three years or four years or whatever because I, I'm not really sure what I'm getting at here. Yeah. Even if he walks, I got to be okay with that. I have to be okay with that because... This is part of the reason there's been two lockouts. Okay. Um, it's kind of funny because the GMs are the ones that are signing the contracts. The owners are the ones saying okay to the contracts, paying the money. But then it's the owners complaining that the players are making too much money and they're, the owners are losing too much money on right. their teams but they're the ones that are controlling how much is getting paid yeah. out and whatnot. And going back to the last the last lockout, uh, they were allowed to do one or two free, I think it was one free yeah. buyout without it hitting the cap space. Um, and they had a certain time frame to do that. I wouldn't be surprised because we're fully expecting a lockout coming in, in two years, I, think, I believe it is, mm -hmm. 2020. Um, there's probably gonna be a similar situation where the owner's gonna say, hey, we have these terrible contracts, Milan Lucic, uh, David Clarkson was one that's yeah. bouncing around, of these guys that get paid money and they're not even, either not playing or they're not playing at that level right. that they should be. Right. Um, and they want to buy them out without getting penalized. They're the ones that are setting the market, right. even though it's the market rate, they're setting the market. So uh, GMs are not always the smartest people. <laughs> a lot of times they're doing a move to save their own job. Yeah because their fans are pissed that they're not doing anything in the offseason and signing anybody, which there were a lot of Sharks fans that were pissed at before the Carlson trade, pissed at Doug Wilson for not doing anything and fired Doug Wilson and all this. Right. So it, there's a lot of GMs that would fall for that and emotionally yeah. sign somebody to try and save their own skin. A lot of very angry fans that are out there. If you give them, <laughs> give them the opportunity. Uh, so real quick, um, we're saying Tyler Sagan. We we wouldn't want to trade for Tyler Sagan. Here's my question now. How about Jamie Ben? Depends. He's making a lot of money. Too. Yeah, he, that's the thing. He's making a lot of money. What do you have to give up for him? No, I don't think there's anything worth giving up to okay. get him. So you heard it here first. Uh, we don't want to trade <laughs> for either of these two guys. Would okay? you Would you trade either? Would you trade Timo Meyer for either of those no, two guys? No, no, that's I would a not. guarantee. Of what would have to go? I would not. I would not want to trade Timo Meyer. I think Timo Meyer has a really good ceiling, and I think he's. You don't want to trade homegrown talent that's that could potentially be at the exact same level, essentially, or higher, potentially, right? right? Um, I would rather hold on to Timo and see where his ceiling goes. Um, he's also younger, so you're mm -hmm. gonna have him for a lot longer too. Um, that's just my take on it. Uh, but like we said, it, as far as Aaron and I are concerned, the folks here at the Fin Factor, no, we should not be going after those <laughs> trades. So before you guys start throwing that and asking us, I those bet we're going to be we're going to get it anyway. We're going to get it <laughs> next week's live segment. Really yeah. gonna, people are going to ask, should we trade for Ben? No, yeah, no. Right. And trade Jones for Bobrowski. Right. Anyway, um, you know, that's we're going to get out of all that new stuff now. So we're going to do something a little bit fun. Uh, again, this is the last show of 2018, and uh, the new year is upon us. So by the time you guys see this, it'll be New Year's Eve, right? Yes. So um, happy new year to you guys. We'll say that again <laughs> before the show ends. But uh, Aaron and I wanted to play a quick game, and I forgot what the game really is called. It was called, uh, what, uh, Two Resolutions and a Lie. It's a, it's a modification of this game called Two Resolutions and a Lie. It's more like um, two things that we think will happen in the new year, uh, more specifically related to the Sharks, and one thing 
that we is, is a lie essentially. So I'm going to say two things that I think are true and one that's a lie and Aaron's going to have to guess which one the lie is. Aaron did it backwards because he wasn't paying attention, but that's okay. He's going to tell me two things. <laughs> He's going to tell me two things that are a lie and one of them that he thinks is true. And I have to guess which one is the true, uh, the true one. So uh, I'll go ahead and start and I'm going to tell you three things here. So uh, first, I think we are going to trade uh, Tim Heed. Okay. Um, I think Jumbo will be an all-star. <laughs> no. And I think EK65 will have the most assists on the team at the end of the year. At the end of the season? Mm-hmm. Ooh. Well, I, I think Jumbo is not going to be an all-star. And it's not that I don't think that you believe that. <laughs> Uh, but I could see the other two happening. Okay. Heed and Carlson being the assist leader. And yeah, you got it. That's yeah. it. Yeah, so I, as much as I want Jumbo to be an all-star, I also don't think he, that he will be voted in. So it's Sorry. it's too bad, and I'm sad. <laughs> um, okay, so again, I have to guess. He's going to tell me three ones. Two lies and one truth. That are two lies, and I have to figure out the true one. Okay, go ahead. All right. Um, the Sharks are going to sign a UFA, either Antoine Vermette or Rick Nash. No. Um, <laughs> Mark Andre Fleury will get injured <laughs> at some point. He's due. He's due. Or uh, they're going to trade for Patty Marlowe. Okay, so it's definitely not trading for Marlowe. <laughs> um, I think I think the other two are true though. Oh man. I think Andre. I think Mark Andre Fleury is going to get injured. I think that you believe that he is going to get injured. Oh yeah, he's okay. Get injured. All right, <laughs> he's he's due. All right, there you go. So there you go. Yeah, that's not bad. So what? What do you think? Is, can you tell them why you think he's going to get injured? By the way, uh, he he's thirty four. Okay. I think he and uh, I think last season was one of the most games he had played either in his career or close to it, and it was over sixty games 50 or 60 okay. games and he missed a lot of time because he was hurt last year so um he tends to get hurt every year. he's kind of another goalie that gets hurt every year he's also again playing out of his mind last year he, <laughs> his numbers were crazy okay uh this year he didn't start off so hot and he's starting to get better now um but i think they're overusing him too much and i think they are in trouble when he goes down because uh malcolm suban has not been playing well and i don't think Maybe they bring up their other backup. Who was it? Demko or um, oh, uh, Dansk? Dansk. Oscar, Oscar Dansk. Yeah, Demko's yeah. up in Vancouver. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I don't know. I think <laughs> I think he's due for an injury. Okay. So, uh, but I also believe that Vermette <laughs> might get signed. So I'm going to say you, that's you, a stretch, but I think it's going to happen. You, you've been talking about. I think see, it should happen. Yeah. That's so what I you said say. you said sign a UFA. I don't think you said trade. No, I said sign. Sign, yeah. Because they are currently a UFA. They do not have a team right now. I don't think they're going to sign a UFA. I think they might trade Tim Heed and get somebody who's on their last year. Anyway. Okay. Anyway, um, so yeah, you, you heard it here. Uh, I think that John Gibson's going to get injured, and he thinks that <laughs> Mark andre Fleury is going to get injured, and everyone can be upset with us. Anyway, uh, so yeah, two more things that I think are true and one that I think is a lie. Um, the Sharks will re-sign EK65. Mm. Um, Pavelski scores 40 goals at the end of the season or Mike Johnson issues us an apology <laughs> <laughs> that one's definitely happening <laughs> uh, I'm going to say Pavelski falls short of 40 really barely okay I think he's going to get into the upper 30s but do you think I think it is true oh I think you think it's okay. true okay right. but I also do think that Mike Johnson's going <laughs> to issue an apology <laughs> so that's that's tough <laughs> yeah, obviously. Yeah, so I, but yeah. I, I don't know. I think he's going to hit 40. Because, again, we talked about uh, he's, I mean, he's at what, 20, 24 right Yeah, now? 24 or something like that right now. I, he's just, I mean, most goal scorers go on hot streaks streaks. and cold streaks. Yeah. So I I think he's kind of due in a way for a cold streak. Not that I want him to, but right. I, I would love to see him score 40. Yeah. I'm not saying I don't. Don't don't get mad at me. I just <laughs> I think he's gonna come to like thirty five to thirty eight range. Okay, that's what I think. So realistically, just before, yeah. You think. Okay, I think he'll get close, very close. Okay, I, feel I mean like that's another twenty goals. No, uh, no, fifteen goals. It's, yeah, fifteen, sixteen goals. You're talking about fifteen, sixteen goals over the course of forty plus games. Okay, I don't know. Okay, maybe he does it forty. I feel like he will. 
So anyway, that was my obviously my fake one was the the Mike Johnson apology. It was yeah, that was a gimme. But right. go ahead, you got the last ones or no? Oh, you had yeah one more on there I think. Uh, <laughs> well, mine was trade one of one of the three extra D men, which you kind of said. Here. Oh yeah, yeah. So that was one. Uh, and Bobrovsky to the Sharks. No. <laughs> And then I said Patrick Marlowe to the Sharks. No. Yeah. Which that, that was going around this yeah. week. Yeah. You want to talk about that one a little bit, maybe? Um, I think you brought it up to me yeah. this week and you heard it somewhere. Well, because, okay, so the, I guess they said the way it would work is that Marlowe would, after July 1st, they'd pay him his signing bonus of $3 million something or whatever. And then it was like $1.25 million that they would be left paying him. And it made it sound like essentially they'd be covering that in terms of the cap hit. But. That would be a six million dollar cap hit. Still, it would just cost us one point two five million to right. pay him. They would have paid him the rest of it already, but the cap hit would still be six million. See, I don't think so. I don't think it's a problem of the Sharks paying the actual cash money out. No, it's it's, it's the, the cap, cap hit. Yeah. And Toronto's in trouble. They need Marlowe's got another year after this, right? And they kind of need him to not be on the books next year, <laughs> so that they can sign Mitch Marner, Aaron, Austin Matthews, and they just signed Nylander. Yeah, so they're kind of. Um, not to mention the gigantic contract of John Tavares. Right. And then, yeah. They're putting themselves yeah. in a corner a little bit. So if Marlowe wasn't there, they wouldn't have a problem. Right. I don't think signing all those guys under those contracts. So they almost need to do that situation and send him to a team that has a lot of cap space, but the owner's cheap and doesn't want to pay out a lot of money. Right. Maybe Ottawa. Ottawa. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good a good one. Uh, Arizona's another one. Okay. They tend to take on a lot of bigger contracts of guys who don't play, like Pronger and yeah. David Clarkson. And actually, I think Clarkson got to Vegas at some point. Oh, really? During the whole uh, uh, be- yeah. before the 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 whole not trade the whole uh, draft pick, thing the yeah. draft yeah. for for their their team. So um, I don't. I, I can see that happening. Not with the Sharks. Yeah. I, I just I don't see the only th- the only thing I'd see Patty doing is signing a one day contract yeah. with the Sharks to retire a shark. Yeah, the whole if Evgeny Nabokov Dan Boyle move. Um, I think that's the way we see uh, Marlow back and Teal. Unless he's still playing in, well, his contract would be up after next season, which then there would possibly be a lockout. Yeah. So yeah, he'd I be like forty one. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. By the time he signs again, so. And I don't see it. Yeah. Unless he signs a minimum deal, which would be about a million bucks. But even again, at forty one, <laughs> that could be a whole new CBA agreement, and they change True. the whole minimums. True. They change, yeah. you know, for older players. So, so it, it'll be a little look a lot yeah. different. Who knows? It, it, if you if you like Marlon, you want him back in teal. You're gonna have him back in teal for a day. Yeah, that's what it sounds. And like. And he's gonna so. drop the puck to <laughs> Couture, the captain, doing yeah. the face off. Oh, how nice! Oh, that's great. In oh, 20, that would have been a good one. Couture will be the, the yeah. new captain. Ah, oh, yeah. Dang it. Oh well, not this season. No. But that was for this upcoming, season. Upcoming, yeah. Well, yeah. 2019, whatever. It right. doesn't matter. Anyway, hey, uh, it's been an awesome 2018. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. We've, we've oh, wait, had... we got this week's games. Oh, my bad. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's talk about this week's games. Just so, real quick. We yeah. got <laughs> Sharks have three games this week, and they're huge. I can't believe you forgot about this. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> tomorrow, or if you're watching this today, they're playing Calgary yes. in Calgary. Uh, that's going to be an enormous game because they are currently tied with points uh, i think the sharks have played more games than calgary though or well i know they have more calgary has more row mm-hmm. than the sharks um so it'd be good to get a win over yeah. their first place rival um yeah, anytime you're playing a divisional opponent you, you get a win on them you're talking about a four point swing right so if mm-hmm. they win they go up on you by two if you win you go up on them by two so yeah four points uh, essentially Virtually up for grabs there, yeah. And what's nice is the Sharks were in Edmonton. Then they just traveled south to go to Calgary, and they've yeah. already been there for a couple of days. So right. they're probably used to the cold by now. <laughs> <laughs> but there are no, no time zone changes. Right. Not They yeah. don't have to get on a plane, or they got on a plane, but not it's a not cross-country flight. flight. Yeah, 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 they're just yeah. going, you know, maybe an hour flight, yeah. maybe not even. So um, so they're, they're already there. That's going to help them. Uh, then from Calgary, they're going to Colorado. Also cold. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but Colorado has the altitude right. difference, uh, which is a big deal. Uh, but they also have the hottest line <laughs> and team in the NHL with Miko Rantanen oh, and so Nathan McKinnon and Gabriel Landeskog. But they just, I think they put their lines in a blender recently too. Okay. I don't think Landeskog has been playing with McKinnon and Rantanen. Okay. Um, so they're kind of spreading things out. But that's going to be a very fast game they yeah. play kind of like Edmonton yeah, but they're yeah. they're more well-rounded than Edmonton sure. I think um, a little bit more punch than Edmonton too mm-hmm. um, 
and then they're going back home and they're playing Tampa Bay Lightning, which is the hottest team yeah. in the East and one of the top teams in the NHL. I think actually they have they holding the record right now. I'm not sure. Is it Nashville? I've been Tampa? watching. I think Tampa it's Tampa, Bay, but but yeah. I think I think they're number one in the league in yeah. terms of overall record and points and everything. Hard not to be. I mean, look at their guy, uh, their lineup up and down. I mean, you, you got first of all Stamkos, and he's not even necessarily your best forward. You no. got Kucherov, Kucherov there, is yeah, definitely their best forward. Um, and then you've got a guy like Victor Hedman on the blue line. I mean, he's a he's a gigantic human being. I saw mm-hmm. him. Uh, they score a goal, and he, they're doing the hug, and he he's the only head you can see. Everybody yeah. else is way below him. And then Vasilevsky plays out of his mind every yes. night. So yeah, Tampa Bay is one of those teams that I mean y- the you'd hate deal. to see. You'd hate to see in the finals, but um, yeah. it would be a heck of a battle. So entertaining. So yeah. three big games, three entertaining games. Yes. Um, two of them are away, one at home. Hopefully Tampa doesn't get much sleep on their flight across the country <laughs> and they're a little groggy and tired. Yeah. It's also an eight PM start. Which is late. I'm also not gonna wish any ill will towards <laughs> Vasilevsky. Well, he already so, had busted his ankle and he just I'm came not back even gonna, from injury. I'm not mentioning it. I'm yeah. just saying. I hope everyone comes in healthy and happy <laughs> into the new year. Not and necessarily all well. leaves healthy and healthy. I'm not gonna say that. I, I might be thinking it, but I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> So anyway, oh, before I do my little closing act again, uh, <laughs> sorry for that. Um, I was jumping the gun there. Uh, the the store, the last thing we're going to say about the store here, and you, I don't know if you still have your hat with you. Did you uh, have it there? The oh, you know, I got there. one right here. So um, here are our, our hats once again. Uh, the Fan Factor. Thank nice. you. There you go. So again, they come flat if you're that type of uh, person that likes their bill flat. I'm um, too old to have a flat hat. Yeah, I'm too old for that too. So anyway, uh, the snapback and everything is really nice, really good quality stuff. Uh, also, the shirts that are on there, teal, gray, black, and then black women's V-cut. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you buy a hat and a shirt before the new year, or we'll say before that our next episode airs. We'll give sure. you guys a little extra time. Another week. Yeah, sure. Um, if you get a combo, then we'll throw in one of those stickers that's signed by a Sharks player. A random. Uh, a random. Random Sharks sticker. Player. Yeah. Shot, but Paul's been collecting... S- Signatures yeah. on the stickers. Almost everybody. Almost everyone. Except for the guys that kind of turn their head and walk towards the locker room and don't say anything. You know who you are. You know who you are. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, uh, please check out the store. Also, anytime we do the lives, we have the Super Chat going now. So if you are interested in helping uh, monetarily, that would be awesome. And mm-hmm. we love having the interactions with you guys during those live chats. Please do check those out. So the best way to uh, know when we're going live is to subscribe. Please subscribe. Please that helps our that. numbers and yes. helps us grow. And more people will see us. And, and it's great. Yeah, not just you, but your other Sharks family. So that would be great. In any case, again... It's been an awesome 2018. Thank you so much for uh, for joining us and, and making this uh, what it is today. It started off as just me and Aaron saying, hey, uh, why don't we just <laughs> talk about the Sharks to let's talk about the Sharks on YouTube to let's have a platform now. And, uh, you know, a lot of it is thanks to you guys and obviously our super producer Jason behind the scenes over there. Uh, we couldn't do any of this without him, obviously. So uh, big thanks to him. And super key grip Joe, who's been MIA lately, but uh, we miss you, bud. Um other than that, yeah, it's it's just been a great year, and I'm really happy with everything that's been going on so far. So, 2019 is looking good. It's looking great. I can't wait. So, uh, stay tuned. Subscribe. Let us know uh, any things that you guys want us to talk about, and we will see you guys next year. Next year. <laughs> good. <laughs> bye <Bye-bye>. bye. Bye. <laughs> hey everyone, thanks for checking out the show. You can support us by following us at The Fin Factor on Twitter and Facebook. You can also find us on Instagram as at Fin Factor. If you're listening to us as a podcast, please, please, please give us a five-star review. And if you want to support our show, share our episode with your friends. Please leave us a comment of what you thought of this episode. And if you want us to cover anything else, let us know.